Hello, this is John Chernus again. We are now going to study the FTP protocol. That is an application layer protocol. File transport protocol is what it stands for. And you've probably used this uh, to download files from the internet, free programs, uh, shareware programs, uh, updates to programs. A lot of these uh, downloads of large files use FTP. It's very efficient for downloading files. So what I'd like to do is capture that traffic and show you how it works. It's going, you're going to see uh, it's very similar to HTTP, so we don't have to spend a ton of time on it. Uh, most of the similarities are the same. I just want to illustrate a few things, uh, such as the port numbers involved with FTP. But uh, the way the uh, TCP layer works with the transport layer, with the sequence and acknowledgement numbers, you don't have to learn anything new there. It's all the same as with HTTP. As you recall, the sequence and acknowledgement numbers after the handshake First of all, there is a handshake with FTP because it is connection oriented. That will work exactly the same way as we saw when we went to that website for San Diego State to get a handshake uh, in those prior uh, lessons. But that stuff's all the same. What we're going to see is FTP is a little bit different in terms of the port numbers involved, but uh, the way the sequence numbers increase based on the throughput of the uh, frames coming through the network it's all basically the same. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and start up Wireshark to capture this session. I think you'll find this kind of interesting because we're actually going to enter some usernames and passwords and we're going to see how insecure the FTP protocol is because the passwords are sent by default uh, through clear text. There's no encryption of the data and we'll actually be able to find the uh, username and password in the capture session. It's kind of interesting how this works. So I'm going to use uh, an old way to do FTP, which is command line, just because it's good, it's good to use it for uh, doing these kinds of lessons. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the command prompt and kind of get ready here. And I'm going to create a new capture file that I'll make available to you for studying. And um, basically I'm going to go to capture here and go to interfaces. So for me, I don't want to use the wireless, I want to use the wired here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to options. As you recall, you always want to go to options and you want to turn off promiscuous mode. So that's a bit of a review. Be sure to uncheck that box and go ahead and hit start. And then I'm going to go to the command line and I'm going to start an FTP session. The way you do FTP at the command line is you simply type FTP and then the name of the site. What I'm going to do is go to um, I'll, let me go to the McAfee website. Uh, there's probably some file up there we can download. Um, it's anonymous FTP, but it does ask you to put in a username and password, so I just want to show you uh, it's kind of an anonymous password. So FTP to FTP.McAfee.com. So just type that in while your uh, protocol analyzer is running. And we should see some frames showing up. There they are. We'll discuss those in a minute. I'm going to type in anonymous because this is anonymous FTP. It is asking for a password though, and we do need to put one in. I'm going to put in uh, my first name, John, J-O-H-N, all in lowercase, to simulate me entering a real password on the network. So let's say this was my real login to this site. I just want to illustrate that. So I just typed that in, and now it looks like I'm logged into FTP, so this uh, is a little clunky, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, I'm going to type DIR to get a directory list and I see a list of uh, information there. I see a very large file here called output.file.txt. I don't know what that is, but it might be worthwhile to uh, download that. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I need to do is type a couple of commands, ASCII, because I want to do a text-based transfer. ASCII is for text-based, binary is if you want to do a, an exe file. So I'm going to do ASCII again to toggle that to ASCII transfer mode. And then I'm, going, I'm just telling the server uh, on the FTP side for McAfee what I want to do. And then I'm going to type hash because hash actually allows me to show the progress of the download. And then I'm going to type get, the get command, and then the name of the file I want. Get output, this looks like a pretty big file, .txt, I don't know what it is. Output.file.txt, you see that's this file right here I'm trying to get. Looks like it's about two megabytes. Enter. And I'm going to start downloading that file and we're going to see that file come through. It's all done now, and now I'm going to type quit to end the session. And now I'm going to close this window, and then I'm going to go to capture, and I'm going to go to stop. Okay, now I can relax. I've got all my session captured. And you can see right away, compared to that HTTP session, it's almost 10 times the number of frames. We had 235 frames with that HTTP session to San Diego State University. Now, to do an FTP 
uh, to McAfee and download this uh, pretty large file, you can see it's almost 2,500 packets or frames, 2,479. Obviously, we're not going to look at all those. We're just going to hit the key points here. So let's go up to the top here, and let's see if there's anything similar. And right away, you see ARP doesn't change. Everything's the same. Why am I having to do an ARP broadcast? Because I need to find the address of my router, just like before. The reason I have to do that is because I'm FTPing to McAfee, and I need to get the IP address for McAfee. And let's scroll over here and see if we can see what's going on here. DNS, it's the same process as we did when we went to the San Diego State website. It's just a different address we're trying, we're trying to resolve to a different IP. And you can see that same DNS server for Comcast is being contacted, and I'm trying to find out what is the IP address of ftp.macfee.com. So this is a bit of a review. The DNS server is providing me an answer. It says CNAME here, which stands for canonical name, which is a fancy way of saying an alias, that the real name of the server is ftp.nai.com. And uh, if we dig a little bit here, we're going to actually see the IP address for it. Uh, I think if we come down and open this up uh, under domain name system, we should see an answer here, and we should get the actual IP in here somewhere. Here are the IP addresses. There's a variety of them here. There's actually four of them because these servers are hit pretty heavily over the internet by the whole world for updates. So they've got four servers apparently up there and running uh, that are uh, all available to download. They're kind of mirror sites of each other is what they're called, mirrors. So what we need to do is see um, if there's a handshake that follows after this. Well, here we are. One, two, three. It looks familiar, doesn't it? Sequence number zero, acknowledgement number one, sequence number zero, acknowledgement number one. I'm not going to go over all that again. Maximum segment size, remember all this? It's the same thing. It's the same thing as, as when we did HTTP. It's what's called establishing a connection or a TCP IP handshake. There's no reason to go over that again. It works exactly the same. What's a little different here is what follows is when I'm actually um, logging in. You see this frame here? This is frame number 10 in my session. You're, when you do this, you'll probably get a different frame number, but you should get similar results. You see here it shows the account I typed in to log in. User is anonymous. Remember when I typed that in at the command line? So I'm actually logging into this FTP site to do that download. And then uh, Basically, I'm being prompted by the server for McAfee, the FTP server, let me scroll down a little bit here, for the password. It says password required. And now I go to the next one, and it basically says, actually it's not the next one, it's a little farther, it's right here, right there. That's frame number 15 for me, and it says request the password, and there's my name. That didn't show up on the screen when I typed it in because passwords don't show on the screen by default for security reasons, but you can see the uh, protocol analyzer here, Wireshark, captured the password. So you see the danger involved with these types of logins. Luckily, most logins now are encrypted. So when you log into your email or you log into a bank website to do a credit card or bank statement transactions, that stuff is all encrypted. The password is not clear text when you log in. It's not possible for people to just grab that password that you're typing in and uh, using it. Uh, they have to have much more sophisticated methods of getting that or your system has to be already compromised by some type of virus uh, or Trojan to get the password off the computer. So that's what I wanted to kind of show you. Everything that follows after this is pretty much the same. You're seeing a lot of FTP traffic here, FTP protocol. One thing I want to mention is when you look at the transport layer you're going to see um, the port numbers in here. You see the port number 21. FTP actually has two port numbers, 21 and 20. 21 is what's known as the command connection and anytime you see a command in FTP uh, that's going to be going across port 21. So when that packet arrives um, at the server for uh, McAfee it knows that port 21 is associated with commands coming from the user. Uh, if I scroll through some of these other packets, I'll see that will change. You see where it says FTP data 20? That's the data connection, and that's for downloading the actual content. So this file actually contains part of that uh, packet, or it's either that or it's an acknowledgement. But if I go through some of these, I'm going to see that there's some actual data in a text file in here. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but as you scroll through here, you would actually see wherever it says FTP data, there's actually part of that text file uh, in, this, uh, in this frame. I probably have to go even farther here, like down here, and actually see what's in there. I'm trying to see if there's anything in there. 
but uh, take my word for it, there's data in that file, and that entire session uh, is being recorded here. We're seeing that. As we get to the end, we'll actually see where I typed quit. So I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom and see where I ended the session, if it can find it. Um, yeah, I see goodbye here. I see quit. So I'm kind of, what I want to show you is, uh, here it says transfer complete. That means the download finished. So as soon as that finished, I think I can even show it. Oh, it took it away now. Um, I already closed the window for FTP. But that's after the file finished. And you saw that on your screen in that uh, black uh, box uh, where the commands were showing. Uh, where I did the FTP session, it said command com uh, transfer complete. And then what I want to show you is there's one, two, three, four steps to end a disconnect in FTP. It's a little different than HTTP. It's a four step process to do the disconnect. And you can see that going on right here, where basically uh, there's a negotiation going on. Actually, I, I need to back up here. It's actually starting right here where I type quit. And then there's one, two, three, four frames after that, which is the actual disconnect sequence to disconnect the connection or in the connection with the FTP server. And that's what's going on there. So that's what we uh, have here. FTP is very similar to TCP. It's used for large data transfer. So if you were troubleshooting an FTP connection, you would want to make sure, just like HTTP, uh, that you know you're resolving your DNS, that it's getting the IP resolved, and you're actually establishing a connection. If you can't establish a connection, it could be that the server is unavailable uh, or there's something wrong with the server where it's not accepting FTP connections. This happens sometimes. Maybe the server needs to have its D, uh, FTP service restarted or sometimes the server is being patched and rebooted or just the server itself is unresponsive and requires a reboot. Or it could be the server is being attacked by, uh, as I mentioned, a denial of service attack. If you saw a lot of half-open connections, as I mentioned before, handshakes that didn't complete to this uh, uh, FTP server, it could be an indication that the server is being attacked. So there's all kinds of tools you can run. You can run the tool like Visual Route, Ping, all kinds of tools to this site if you were having trouble with it to uh, try to diagnose the reason why you're having a, a particular problem. I didn't have any problem here. Everything seemed to work fine, and I had a successful login and download with FTP. Now I'm going to go ahead and disconnect from and turn off this session and we will move on to the next lesson.